Thanks for joining us today. We have Dr. Jason Bloom, and he is a facial plastic surgeon in the Philly area. How are you, doctor? Doing well. <laughs> uh, we're coming off uh, a long weekend here, so I'm ready to get back to work. <laughs> so can you tell me more about your practice and how you got started in plastic surgery? So um, I am a facial plastic surgeon, and I started out um, – doing my residency in head and neck reconstructive surgery at the University of Pennsylvania. So, yeah. and, um, and I've always had a real passion for anatomy, and I think the head and neck anatomy, facial anatomy, is always the most complex. Um, so that interested me. And then when I was in college, I was also a history of art minor, so I've always had a love of aesthetics and art and you know, it just kind of turned out that what I was really drawn to during my residency program was, you know, combining the love of anatomy of the head and neck and this kind of sense of aesthetics and art together. And about, you know, a quarter to a fifth of our training in head and neck surgery is aesthetics. So, um, and facial plastics and reconstructive surgery. Um, and I wanted to kind of further my education. And after completing my chief residency year at the University of Pennsylvania, I went to New York City and I was a fellow there in facial plastic and reconstructive surgery. And the fellowship is actually through our academy, which is the American Academy of Facial Plastic and Reconstructive Surgery, also known as the AAFPRS. Um, after finishing the fellowship, I decided to move back to Philadelphia, um, where Penn was, and open up with Dr. Eric Bernstein. And um, I joined his practice, and his practice is called the Mainline Center for Laser Surgery. So we have over 50 lasers and energy-based devices in the office. I do everything, he likes to joke, that causes blood or smoke in the office. So I do all of the ablative lasers. Those are the ones that kind of peel your skin off and then you peel and make your skin look better. I do all of the injectables. So not all of um, what I do is surgical. I do a lot of non-surgical things with modulators like photons and fillers and also some office space surgery. And then I do all the surgery. So that kind of encompasses my practice. Um, and the nice thing now is I've been able to give back to our Facial Plastics Academy. And then now I have my own fellow through the AAF PRS that I share with the University of Pennsylvania. So I'm an assistant mm -hmm. professor at the University of Pennsylvania. And now um, I'm the co-director of the Facial Plastic Surgery Fellowship Program. So it is um, kind of coming from a full circle now. And uh, love and light. So, so how many years was that? How many years did it take you to, to do all that? So after college, uh, basically we did four years of medical school um, and uh, five years of my residency program. And then an additional year of uh, facial plastics fellowship. And now I've been um, out in practice for since going on seven years. That's commitment. Yeah. So um, what's your least favorite thing about being a plastic surgeon? You know, I think the least favorite thing is that, um, you know, I never want to come off as like salesy or mm -hmm. selling something to a patient. Um, what I do is doing pretty much 99% cosmetic surgery is we live in this kind of nether world of, medicine and retail because, um, you know, anyone can do this um, that has some kind of, you know, nurses doing it, you know, it, even the injectable kind of things, nurses, dentists doing it. I don't begrudge anyone. Anyone can do this stuff. That's fine for me. But, you know, I have to, um, people come to me for my reputation, for my results, but I never want to come off as being salesperson, a salesy person. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I, I just say I'm going to try to make you the best you that, that you can be. Um, and I, I, you know, I'm really bad at um, spending other people's money. So I'm just like, what's bothering you? 
this is what I can do both surgically and non-surgically to help your concerns. But mm. I never want to like push something on someone. You know, everyone kind of that comes to see me or I think my reputation in the community is being very conservative. And um, yeah, I never want to come off as salesy. And it's it can be difficult. You have to kind of um, pull back um, when you're in this kind of industry. Mm. Because it's not it's not the same as you know medically necessary. Right. This procedures. isn't necess- this isn't a medically necessary you know procedure. Do you see a lot of cosmetic tourism in uh, in Philly? Um, a little bit less in Philadelphia now. I mean, this past month or two, I get a lot of patients from New York, New Jersey, um, DC area um, patients that are willing to um, travel like kind of local regionally. So uh, is there a specific demographic that's harder to work with in plastic surgery? Yeah, I mean, it's different. I mean, I think I have two main demographics in my office. I have the 20 to Mm 40-year-olds, which makes up actually a lot of my injectable practice um, because this is my age group. Um, So I see a lot of uh, my friends, my wife's friends, and uh, people community who know me. So that's a huge part of the injectables. And then even even to like the early 50s, and then mid 50s to mid 60s, that makes up a majority of my aging based surgical practice. So whereas the younger group is also getting, you know, smaller surgeries like eyelid things and uh, rhinoplasties and nose jobs, the older group is more aging based surgery, whether it's eyelids, uh, facelifts, uh, brow lifts, that kind of procedure. What's your greatest passion in life? I mean, I, I would say my greatest passions are my, my family. I have uh, two wonderful kids right now who are ages. Um, I have a son who's nine and a daughter who's five and um, my wife. And uh, you know, that is my number one passion. First, it's definitely always been my priority. Um, and then, you know, I, you know, I, I strive to um, create a good professional image, um, and uh, and I think I'm looking at positively the aesthetic and medical community here, both in my area and also nationally. I speak uh, nationally and internationally a lot of cosmetic and plastic surgery meetings mm-hmm. um, and so uh, you know that that's my passion so about how many invasive procedures would you say you do every year uh, that's hard to say I operate about one to two days a week on okay. average and they're usually full days um, you know I, I probably my most common surgery is right last year nasal surgery I do um, well over 150 surgeries a year, okay. um, and uh, you know I'm, I'm pretty much operating every week. And then, I, but that wouldn't if I was just in the operating room every day, that wouldn't satisfy me because I still love seeing patients in the office. I love doing the injectable part of it um, because it really helps me develop relationships with patients, and I can see you know constantly. I'm asking, like, how is your family? How are the kids? Uh, it, it's nice to develop these relationships that you wouldn't uh, otherwise if you just saw the patient for surgery. So I'm, uh, if these are patients I see every you know, three to four months for neuromodulator mm-hmm. or every six months uh, for filler. So they're constantly in my office, and uh, mm-hmm. it's nice because I get a nice blend in my office of surgery the non-surgical procedures, and I also travel and speak for a lot of these different companies um, on a national and international level. So maybe even one day a week sometimes I'm speaking at a national meeting or I'm traveling to do trainings for other physicians. How would your family and friends, I guess, describe you outside of work? Um, I think they would describe me as um, a driven, hard worker, very personable, social, easy to get along with. 
perfectionist and I'm a driven individual, mm -hmm. which many plastic surgeons are. Do you find it easy to build relationships with patients? Like I hear a lot about uh, there being a sort of necessary professional barrier that can sometimes get in the way of the, the genuineness of that connection you have with the patient. Yeah, I mean, I think sometimes the lines are really blurred. And interestingly, some of my patients have become good friends of mine. Mm -hmm. um, because I'm constantly seeing them, um, there is, or, or common interests. Mm -hmm. A friend who is a little bit older than my age, but um, I performed with neck lift on him probably about four years ago, but we've become good friends. And we've become, um, uh, he collects many of the same things that I do, so we've taken up similar interests. Um, and, you know, I, I, I think in today's age of like social media and with all the different services out there, mm -hmm. um, you know, people as well as plastic surgeons can have two views. They can either put their whole life out there or keep it in. Mm -hmm. And because I'm social, I, I just put it all out there. And I certainly have friends on my Facebook profile and, you know, uh, that uh, at, at patients on my Facebook profile who have become friends, um, as well mm -hmm. as on my Instagram. So I'm kind of one who puts it all out there. It's my work is in there, my family's in there. Um, and some people will say, well, you're crazy for posting your kids and your family and your wife and what you do afterwards, but um, that's me. So there are usually four struggles for entrepreneurs, and it's money, time, people, and passion. So which one of those would you say has been your greatest struggle in plastic surgery? Um, I, I think probably the biggest struggle of those four has been time. Um, it's, you know, what we do is, is very, it's all about time management. Um, you know, definitely my passion's there. I love it. Um, it, it is rewarding financially. Um, so those are not things that have been, uh, issue for me but time you know you need to set it you know, I, I wish there was more hours in the day you can't mm -hmm. do everything you need to really prioritize what is the most important things the things that you want to do as well as the things that are important um, for your practice uh, and so and also family you need to set aside like when I have decided mm -hmm. I work from you know nine to six or nine to five, and I get home and I'm with my kids. I want to have dinner with them and put them to bed before I do anything else. And so mm -hmm. it's just and as doctors, I think we learn that when you're in medical school, whether you're whether you're even an undergrad, you know, or, or for example, when it starts as early as high school when you're playing. I was involved in a lot of sports in high school and college and there was things that I want to do you need to prioritize your time you need to understand that these are the times to study these are the times to work but you need to set aside time in order to be with family do things you want um, and really understanding what's important where can viewers learn more about you you know the easiest way to learn more about me is through my web page is uh, facialplastics.com. That's awesome. Thank you so much for doing this interview with me. Thanks for having me.